I know you think I sound like a broken record, but I will say it again. The culture wars, they are not a distraction. They are the playbook. And if you don't believe me, here's Republican presidential candidate Nikki Haley at a recent campaign event where she discusses Florida Governor Ron DeSantis's so-called parental rights in education law. There was all this talk about the Florida bill, the don't say gay bill. Basically what it said was you shouldn't be able to talk about gender before third grade. I'm sorry, I don't think that goes far enough. And after DeSantis said that advanced placement African-American studies classes were illegal under Florida law, we've got at least four more states that have said that they'll examine or investigate the curriculum as well, not to mention the sustained assault that has already been going on across the country before this whole debacle. So my political panel is going to weigh in now. Eugene Daniels is a White House reporter and an MSNBC political contributor. Amisha Cross is a Democratic strategist. And Doug High is back with us, our Republican friend, honey, right over here. All right. Um, uh, Eugene, let me start with you, because you have, you covered the White House, but you've covered a lot of campaigns. It seems to me that this, the, the culture wars issues, they do not have legs in a national election. It is something that is good for primary, has not voted so well for my Republican friends in the general election. So what is, I don't understand what's going on here. Yeah. Peel back the layers for me. They have to get the nomination. And so they're going to continue to fight those culture wars. And it is at the heart of the Republican Party, right? It is not at the heart of the Democratic Party. It's not at the heart of independents. When you talk to Democrats and independents, they aren't talking about these things um, in the same way that Republican candidates want them to. And when you watch someone like Ron DeSantis, something that he is able to do that others cannot, he's been differentiating himself from them by actually using the tools of the state to fight culture wars. Right, like Nikki Haley, all these other folks are talking about it. He has actually used the tools of the state to do that. You, uh, okay, okay, D Doug. I'm, look, uh, state retaliation against teachers. I'm look, sanitizing history to promote a government narrative, limiting free expression. Uh, I mean, I have a whole list here. Is this not the type of big government that Republicans? Oppose? Okay. Is well, it big government? You know, that's unfair because Republicans have been spending so much money under Donald Trump that, you know, we've embraced some big big government oh, conservatism. So a, you know, it's a little shift. Okay, right. flexible. But but what, what DeSantis does that's interesting is he picks and chooses his battles very specifically. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, where a lot of uh, governors or, or candidates are outspoken on abortion, you don't hear a lot from DeSantis on this. And meanwhile, when he is identifying himself with Republican voters as a culture warrior, when the hurricane hit Florida, he was there with President. Biden. He worked with FEMA and he basically demonstrated to voters, I can also be an adult and run a government. Mm -hmm. That's important for him. That's how he's going to separate himself uh, from the rest of the pack, or at least potentially. Mm. Well, we will be watching the Republican primary as it unfolds. I can't wait till we get more peeps in the race. I, I want to turn to Wisconsin. Um, voters in Wisconsin are actually heading back to the ballot box in a Supreme Court race. Uh, and this is a primary election. And this could really make the difference in Wisconsin for what uh, Democrats are able to, to do and get done. Now, Amisha, I know you know uh, Chicago really well. It's down the street from uh, Wisconsin. I was just there. What could the national implications be for uh, Democrats as it relates to this race? I, th I think Wisconsin is ground zero for some of these issues of democracy that we often talk about. Absolutely. And one of them specifically is abortion rights. We know that um, at the Supreme Court level, at the state level, that that is one that many states have decided that they are going to push towards eradication, making sure that they don't have, um, that women don't have the right to choose. And I think that for the Midwest, sadly, not all states look like Illinois. And you have an instance where this could be something that could really be thrown up um, between that as well as making sure that um, education funding happens. We're seeing in multiple states where the courts are really making those decisions. And as much as some of these state Supreme Courts act as though or have said that they are not political in nature, what we've seen is a stark push towards the right and eradication of rights that many people have been fighting for across this country for generations. I mean, the, the candidates for the Supreme Court race, they are running in as, as Democrats and Republicans. Like, it is, it is, it is quite, like, clear on the state level. Um, Wisconsin, though, Eugene, can be very unpredictable. In the past midterm election, it's, of course, Governor Evers, a Democrat, was reelected, but uh, the, the state also sent Ron Johnson, a Republican, back to the United States Senate. And so it's kind of hard to tell mm -hmm. what I, could go down. I, I mean, I think with the Supreme Court issue, what's, or the state Supreme Court issue, mm -hmm. what's yes, really interesting is that um, voters, Democratic voters, are for the first time actually care about the state Supreme Courts, right? They care about the courts in a way they hadn't before. And this right? is an important point, because they didn't run any 
candidates, exactly. they, they are, there was an, op this was not the first election, like this seat was open before and the Democrats didn't put a candidate up. Exactly. So now what you see is after um, Dobbs came down, Roe v. Wade goes away, Dem there's a shifting in that Democrats and now Democratic strategists are realizing that we can also fight on the courts because Republicans are very good at one, a, a lot of things, one thing being having the long game. And the courts are a place where you play the long game. And so that's what you're seeing in Evers. The reason that he's governor again is because of abortion. So that is a state in which people talk about it as ground zero. It really, really is. It really, really is. Um, Congress, a lot of people like to beat up on Congress. I think there's something, I think the one everybody. by part of everybody, yeah, myself <laughs> included, honey, some days. Very, very, very sad for all the staffers that work for members of Congress nowadays. It's rough out there. <laughs> Look, I think one of the most bipartisan issues, if not the most bipartisan issue in this Congress, is in fact the issue of China. And uh, when we talk about China, I think that also extends to TikTok, right? And so we are actually seeing bipartisan support for a crackdown on TikTok. Folks should know TikTok is owned by the Chinese company ByteDance, okay? Proposals have ranged from enhanced security to just the outright ban of TikTok. Uh, Doug, first of all, are you on the Chicken Talks? I am not. You are not. Okay. I am on TikTok. I'm on the Grams. Oh, you're I'm on the, the Grams. Okay. I am on TikTok, but I didn't get on TikTok till I got out of government because mm -hmm. we and, and campaign life because it was not so, it was something we were advised not to be on. What do you think about this bipartisan? assault, if you will, on TikTok. Well, it's not just Capitol Hill. What we're seeing is governors, uh, Democratic governors, Republican mm -hmm, governors, mm -hmm. they're, they're able to control what they can control, which means your government device. If, you're, if you are a state employee in certain states, Republican and Democratic governors are saying, you can't uh, put this on there. And we know that there's no way that any uh, candidate, Republican or Democrat, can be too anti-China. So it's a very safe place for them to go, and they can talk about doing bipartisan things, even if they're not doing those on, on other issues, where there are a whole lot of opportunities for Republicans and Democrats to work together on a lot of issues mm -hmm. that may not be making the front page these days. You know, look, a lot of like young folks are watching this show, honey, they're watching it on the Peacocks as well, <laughs> on Mondays with new episodes. Um, there are about 80 million people who have a TikTok account. Mm -hmm. uh, you, if my my former anchor PA, now writing associate producer, says she learns a lot of things from TikTok. Mm -hmm. how, how, can you even put the genie back in the bottle, Amisha? I absolutely don't think so. Um, there needs to be security precautions, obviously, because we know of China's engagement there. And, and as much as we paid attention to that Chinese spy balloon, I don't think there's enough attention being paid to the fact that we're giving our information via TikTok. But right now, to your point, Simone, um, there are millions of people who look to TikTok for their everyday news, for their clips, for their understanding of politics and policy, for culture. I'm not sure you my, can eradicate my that. My sister-in-law, I asked her for some recommendations for my good girlfriend's bachelorette party. She was like, do you need me to send you the TikTok links? I'm <laughs> Like, oh my goodness. Good. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. This is so then what is the solution? Anything from the White House? Yeah, I mean, when you ask the White House about this, because you know, they we have a possible campaign coming, and so we've mm -hmm. been asking them, is President Biden going to be using TikTok? The DNC uses TikTok. Um, and so they don't have a great answer Ooh. at this point on that because they're also trying to figure that out. They mm -hmm. know that they need to use it, and it's something that they talk about reaching people and finding, and you know, you know this. Well, we're going where the people are, right? Meeting people and the people are. are on the chicken talks. Well, well, TikTok today, it lives to fight another day. Eugene Daniels, Amisha Cross, Doug High. Thank you all thank very you. much for such a spirited conversation. After